Hello, my friends. It's 10 minute Tuesday time. Today, I want to show you my favorite framework for, for consolidating change. This is the thing that's been most useful for me. I, I think probably in the last five or six years as a way of not only reinforcing change, but uh, increasing the change journey, uh, causing me to go to bigger and more beautiful places all the time. This is the tool that I use. This is my go-to strategy. Uh, people ask me all the time, how do you make change stick? They have moments where they feel really clear and confident and alive and then fear that they're going to fall backwards. Uh, so this is my answer to that question. Uh, it is actually, I recorded a 10 minute Tuesday on this subject. I think the first 10 minute Tuesday I did nearly two years ago. Uh, and it's worth revisiting because it's such a powerful tool. So uh, the idea is that most people orient their lives like this. They start with strategy, then they go to state, then they finish with story. So strategy, state, story is the common path. It's the way that most people live their life. Yet if you're going to succeed in life and you're going to consolidate change, you're going to have to do the complete opposite, story, state, strategy. So the framework you're looking for, the anchor to this tool is those three words in that order, story, state, strategy. Uh, so this is game changing. And I think if you can practice this even semi-consistently, it gives you such a massively unfair advantage in life. That's, that's why I love it so much. It is a nice experience to go into the world feeling like you have an unfair advantage. Uh, so the common path, uh, the average person gets up, in the gets up in the morning and their first question is, what do I need to do? You remember, they're starting with strategy. Uh, so they're occupied with task, with action, with effort. And when you start with that question, what do I need to get done or what do I need to do? You, you often feel overwhelmed before you even begin because there's always so much to do and you didn't finish what you needed to do yesterday or the day before that. So you're already behind. Um, interestingly, most people have no uh, awareness about the fact that the strategy they're trying to achieve is impacted by the state they find themselves in. Or well, maybe they do have awareness that they're being impacted by state, i.e. how they're feeling about themselves, but they're probably not sure how they get to control state. For, for most people, they feel like state, how they feel, their energy levels, their motivation levels, whether they're happy or sad, whether it's a good day or a bad day, is controlled by things that are external to them. I.e., if, it's a, if, it's a, if the sun is shining, uh, if there's money in the bank, if people are being kind to you, well, then you're going to feel good and be in a good state. But if it's cold or windy or rainy or too hot or, you know, the weather's terrible or people are being unkind or there's some pressure going on, then of course you're going to feel bad. Um, but interestingly, the state that you're in has a massive impact on the work you can achieve. You know, I'm sure you're aware of the fact that on your best day, you do good work. When you're in a great state, you have access to energy and creativity and focus and you get stuff done. When you're in a poor state, that impacts you, what you do. You make poor decisions, you take a long time, you make mistakes, you have no creativity. So you start with strategy, but it's impacted by the state that you find, that you find yourself in and you have no capacity to change that state. And even more of an impact is the story that you're living out of. And most people have absolutely zero awareness of the fact that they are living in a story you know it's like they are on the truman show if you remember that old jim carrey movie where he is on the movie set it's all in a dome and he has no awareness his whole life is being scripted everyone's a paid actor you know most people are, are fumbling their way through life you know feeling like it just is what it is this is my lot in life this is how things work for me this is the kind of person i am this is what happens in my life having no idea that it's all just a script it's all just a story uh, and if they do gain some awareness that it's a story, they feel like they're an actor in the story that's written by someone else and they have no control over it. So you can imagine how ineffective and inefficient that way of living is. You're trying to do your best work. You're impacted by a negative state that you didn't control and you're severely limited by a negative disempowering story that someone else has written for you. Uh, success is the complete opposite of that. And people who succeed in life realize that they are not the actor in the story. They're the storyteller. And that's where they start their work. That's where they do their best work in the storytelling space. They realize how wonderful it is that they are the one with the pen and paper. They realize that all past challenges and bottlenecks and frustrations and stuckness has just been evidence of the story that they wrote for themselves at a prior time in life to make sense of experience, to understand pain, to give meaning to things they were uncertain about. They realize that they have diminished themselves by writing negative and disempowering stories. They realize that even insecurity 
it was their own story. No one else made them insecure. They decided that they were no good and they wrote a story about that. And that's been their experience out of that story. They kind of get that. They realize that all we have is story. People who succeed in life just tell better stories. They do so off the quality of that storytelling piece. So people who succeed start with story. Obviously, they deconstruct old stories as the first priority. And that's so much of the coaching work I get to do with people is the work of deconstructing old stories, of rendering them nonsensical, of reviewing the data around them. And as an adult going, that, that's a strange story. That's a story I told as a four-year-old. And maybe it made some sense then, but it clearly doesn't make any sense now. And it's, a, it's an ugly story. It's a limiting story. It's a story that uh, is creating a bunch of pain. So I'm going to deconstruct that story until it makes no sense so that so the slate is clear and i'm free to use that pen and paper to good effect and write a beautiful compelling enlarging story for myself so that's how i start my day it's always with storytelling it's reviewing my agreements what i am saying yes to what i am saying no to it's starting with this question not what what do i need to do but who do i need to be and, and who am i who do i want to be and i go speak to myself like i am that person already I write that story for myself. I speak those words over my life. I go and do laps around my water tank and I do that storytelling work. That's my first priority. Before I do any work, before I even manage my state, I align myself to a beautiful and compelling story. And that storytelling, just like the old story got embedded because it was rehearsed and practiced and found evidence for, so the new story, you rehearse it, you embed it, you find evidence fit too, it becomes the new default. So you start with your day with storytelling. Then you go prime your state. Our state is made up of what we focus on, what we're doing with our body, our physiology, and the words we're using. So we have control over that. So no one's controlling those things for us. We get to choose all three of those things. And so it's incredible the power we have to cause ourselves to be in a wonderful state, to not leave state up to chance, to practice life-giving rituals that give every cell in our body energy. So after a compelling storytelling piece, then I go practice life-giving rituals that prime my state. Exercise, eating beautiful eggs for breakfast, you know, poached eggs on sourdough with a bit of pesto and a nice coffee. Um, watching a bit of NBA basketball, some breathing exercises, a bit of stretching, sometimes a run or a ride. You know, it's not disciplines. It's not hard work. It's not anything that's about strategy. It's all state management stuff. Because I know that if I'm in a right, the right state, I'm capable of doing extraordinary things. That's true for each of us. We all, we all have magic inside of us. That's not the problem. The problem is can you access it when you need it? If you get good at state management, then you have access to your best stuff. That's, you watch peak performance sport, that's what you're watching. You're watching people who know how to manage their state. The people who, who succeed one season, fail the next season, or have periods of brilliance mixed with moments of madness in sport, you're watching people who don't know how to manage their state. That's what you're seeing there. They're just as skillful as the other, other players, but they just don't know how to harness it when they need it. So start with story, then manage your state. And then you've set yourself up to go do epic stuff, to go then go into work go into doing work effectively, efficiently, with full of motivation, full of clarity, make great decisions, work well, solve problems, get stuff done. It's an incredibly efficient way to work. You have to spend less time working if you come in the right state. If you're in a poor state living out of a small story, you've got to, like it's so inefficient that it takes up all your time and even when you've used up all your time, you still haven't got the job done. So to summarize, Story, state, strategy, that's the order, not strategy, state, story. If you can get that and, and live by that, it becomes a beautiful course correction tool in your life to get you back in the space where you're seeing lasting change. And that lasting change is increasing. It's taking you to bigger and more beautiful places. I hope that's useful. I'll talk to you again next week.